In this video, I'm going to be talking about my approach to lower back pain, and we're going to be talking about some of the different causes as well as the workup as well. For more educational resources, like our medical ID cards, check out medicalbasics.com. So the first thing that we're going to be talking about are the different causes. And what I've kind of broken these down to is going to be into commons as well as can't misses. So when I'm talking about commons, I'm really trying to do a, an outside-in approach to make sure that I kind of hit every type of major category. So the first thing is going to be any type of muscle or soft tissue damage. And then we're going to start dealing with the vertebra. And these can be causes of like osteoporosis, fracture, osteoarthritis, or scoliosis. It can be common causes of lower back pain. And then when we're dealing with the actual discs, things like herniation, and then moving on into the nerves can be things like spinal stenosis or radiculopathy. From there, we start thinking about the can't misses. And these are things like cancer when you have metastatic disease or any type of infection like spinal epidural abscess or osteo, as well as caudoquina. And these can't misses are things that you're going to be acting on much, much sooner. And we'll see that when we talk about management. So when we actually are dealing with the work of these patients, for the most part, the majority of your workup is going to come from the history. You're not going to be getting very much labs. You're not going to be getting very much imaging. The most of the information is going to come from the history because each of these different causes are going to be, they're going to have a very different presentation and it's going to be quite distinct, at least from the general categories that I was talking about. And from there, we're going to be doing a very thorough physical exam, specifically with the neuro exam, having a very focused lower extremity neuro exam as well as a rectal exam. And this is just to rule out um, to have any additional workup. So if all these are negative, don't have any major red flag symptoms, negative neuro exam, um, then you're really not going to want to get imaging for six weeks. And the reason why we're doing that is because for the most part, the workup of the more benign causes and the more common causes of lower back pain, really the treatment of all of that is going to be quite similar. A lot of it's going to be rest, a lot of it's going to be NSAIDs, acetaminophen, and things like that. And the workup's not going to change, so there's no reason for us to get imaging that can open up another can of worms and also is going to cost the patient money. There are certain situations we'll want to get imaging, and these are really going to kind of have to do with the, the cause. And so red flag symptoms, these are going to be things that are going to open up things like cancer um, or any type of infection, right? So these first couple of group is going to be more leaning towards some type of indicator of, of cancer. So things like fever, weight loss, any type of bladder or bowel dysfunction, any history of cancer. And this includes patients who have had treated, successfully treated cancer as well, any type of neurological death. Deficit or, or neural gaze. So if the physical exam was positive in any way, as well as the uh, rectal exam. And this one's going to be any ill health or presence of other medical diseases. It's really going to predispose you to having more infections. That's kind of what that uh, guideline was showing. And then finally, older people as well as uh, younger people as well for the increased cancer risk. Next, we're going to be dealing with the actual imaging. And I mentioned before that for the most part, you're not going to be getting imaging until six weeks. But I think that also depends on the cause. If you're worried about a certain thing in particular, especially if you have any type of red flag symptoms or neural exam is off, or just the history doesn't seem consistent with something that's going to be more benign, then there's going to be certain situations where you're not going to want to wait. And I think really what it boils down to from there is now that you know that you need imaging, what type of imaging should you get? What type of imaging modality should you be getting? And I think the easiest one to identify is MRI and X-ray. So x-ray is very specific. The image is not going to be as clear. You're going to be wanting it for a very specific case. And, and I think that the only one that I can really think of that's going to be kind of absolute that you can use this as diagnosis is going to be some type of fracture. If you're really sure of some type of fracture and you're not worried about any type of spinal cord damage, then you're going to, you can potentially get away with just an x-ray. When we're dealing with soft tissue, when we're dealing with any type of infection, or when we're dealing with the spinal cord itself, that's when an MRI is going to be needed. You cannot get it, that type of information from a CT, and you definitely cannot get it from an X-ray. But when, anytime we're dealing with any type of soft tissue as well as the spinal cord, then you're going to be wanting to get an MRI. CT is really, if you need a, a little bit better image and you have a little bit more higher risk patient that she wants a little bit more information from, you're going to want to get, get a CT over an X-ray. So that's kind of how you kind of approach these different problems. I think MRI is the easiest one to think about of when you would need an MRI.
And then finally, it's going to be actual treatment. And this kind of puts things into perspective of why we don't get imaging as frequently as we you may think we would. And I think that uh, it really has to do on the management. For the most part, these patients are going to get reassurance and education, um, as well as just NSAIDs, acetaminophen, and muscle relaxants. Those are going to be the primary treatments. And it all depends on the cause as well. But for the more benign issues, if you're not worried about any type of cancer, any type of infection, really, this is how you're going to be treating these patients. You're going to want to avoid opioids when you can and kind of the for the most part you're just going to tell them about uh, kind of the importance of imaging and when we're going to use it as well as uh, the importance of using these certain anti-inflammatories and these pain medications rather than using some type of opioids be sure to check out our website medicalbasics.com for more educational resources like our medical id card scrub notes and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons